I'd like to introduce you to the folk artist Heather Galler. Heather Galler paints lots of different things, landscapes and animals, but one of my favorite things that she paints are bouquets of flowers. She is going to be our inspiration as we make our own folk art bouquet of flowers. We are going to be using paper and one of our magical paint markers. If you don't have a paint marker, you could just use a Sharpie or even a crayon. I'm starting by drawing a circle with another circle around it. And I think I'm just going to put some lines radiating from the smaller circle. Now maybe I'll add some flower petals. For you, you could follow along with me or you could look at some other flower designs by Heather Galler and use that as your inspiration. It's totally up to you. I made sure to draw very slowly with my paint marker so my flower petals would be consistent, look all the same all the way around. All right, now I'm gonna try a different flower. This one is going to have longer flower petals. It's always a good idea for an artist to have variety in their artwork, meaning things are not the same, but different. I think I'll try adding a circle around my flower. I noticed that Heather Galler uses lots of circles after she's made her flowers. Now, as you make your flowers, bigger and bigger, they might bump into each other. To show that one flower is behind another flower, you might need to hop around the other flowers you've already created. This will make your artwork have depth. When you use this method of drawing or painting, it's called overlapping. I'm trying to show that some flowers are in front of others or some flowers are being overlapped. Now let's try adding some leaves. Leaves can really fill in any of the empty spots that we might have, spots that aren't big enough for a flower, but just big enough for a leaf. When I'm making my bouquet of flowers, I'm making sure to only create flowers from the middle of my paper up. From the middle of my paper down will be my vase and my table. All right, now let's talk about that vase. I'm going to be using two diagonal lines, one on either side, and I'm using a curved line at the bottom, not a straight line. This will create the illusion that my flower pot or my vase is rounded at the bottom. It will make my artwork look three-dimensional. You can add any kind of designs you want to on your vase. I decided to use stripes and I made them curved to match the bottom of my vase to continue the illusion that my vase is three-dimensional. I'm going to make a checkerboard pattern at the bottom. I'm doing that with vertical and horizontal lines and then creating an A-B pattern as I start to color in. You could do any kind of pattern that you wanted to on both your vase and your table or tablecloth. It's totally up to you. This is just my idea inspired by Heather Galler. All right, now let's try to add some color. I'm using oil pastels at lightning speed to add color, baby, color to not all of my flowers, just some of them. If you don't have oil pastels, this trick works perfectly with crayons too. And the trick that I'm speaking of is a little bit of a wax resist. So I'm just picking and choosing areas of my flowers to color with oil pastels. When that's finished, I can move on to watercolor paint. When you're working with watercolor paint, make sure that you have water on hand, that's why it's called watercolor paint, so you can wake the paint up by adding little droplets of water to your paint before you get started. Now I'm just adding a little bit of color, baby, color to the leaves, any place, and the flowers, any place that I did not add oil pastel, I am going to add paint. Please make sure to always wash your brush really well before changing colors. This will make it so that your colors stay nice and vibrant and beautiful. And I'm also trying to make sure to fill in all spaces, leaving no white areas behind. And as you're using watercolor, you sometimes might notice that your paintbrush makes kind of a scratchy line. That's your paintbrush's way of telling you that it's thirsty. It needs more paint and it needs more water. Always try to make sure never to have scratchy brush strokes when you are using watercolor paint. 
All right, now I'm going to finish adding all of the color to my masterpiece, but I'm only adding color to my flowers. Once my flowers are complete, I'm going to work on the background. I am going to leave my vase and my tablecloth black and white. I'm doing that because I was inspired by Heather Galler. It really helps to make my flowers the emphasis or the most important part of my masterpiece. However, if you want to paint everything, I say go for it. I will be adding a little color to the background. For that, I'm using that oil resist or wax resist technique. I'm drawing stripes in the background, but you could create any design that you wanted. Once your design is complete in the background, the part that is behind your flowers, try adding your watercolor paint on top. It's called resist because, check this out, when you add your color, the paint or excuse me, the oil pastel is going to resist the paint and push it right off, leaving behind these really cool bright stripes in my design, but it might be something completely different in yours. Now, like I said, I'm leaving this masterpiece complete, meaning I'm not going to paint my vase or my table. If you decide to do that, I say go for it. I cannot wait to see how beautiful your masterpieces turn out. By the way, I forgot to mention when I was painting my flowers, I only picked a few colors to be used per flower. This made it so the flower looked as though all the petals belonged together. Let's take a look one more time at Heather's beautiful paintings, and that can be our inspiration for our own masterpieces. I cannot wait to see how yours turn out, so let's get started. <music> 